68% of American households own at least one pet, and many are choosing to own animals that could be considered exotic. The legal definition is subject to local jurisdiction, but generally an exotic pet is one that is rare, unusual, or a wild animal, not typically kept by humans. Often, that's because those animals can be deadly. It's better to be bitten by an angry snake than a hungry snake, because the hungry snake won't let go for a while. But, uh, but they're, they're very popular and should not be kept around small children. Uh, because the small children are edible. More than 20 years ago, Ken Foose opened a reptile and exotic specialty store. And it's the type of store that is getting harder to find in the U.S. The animals he sells range from those that can just give you a nasty bite to those that can kill in a matter of minutes. This is our second largest selling animal. You would think us being a reptile store. It would be all reptiles, but this, this is a, a, a pygmy hedgehog. They're very popular. We sell hundreds of these, and I wouldn't own one if you gave it to me. But, um, but we sell a lot of them. It's basically an animated rock. Regulations around owning exotic pets are different in every state of the U.S. In Nevada, pretty much anything goes. There's not a lot that we can't have. Uh, I mean, I can have a tiger in here for sale. Why would I? I'm not qualified to own a tiger. Most of the people I know are not qualified to own a tiger. It's the same thing with primates. We used to sell, we can sell monkeys here. We can sell chimpanzees. We can sell anything we want. But 99% of the people on this planet are not qualified to own a monkey, period. And I, I, I sold monkeys for five years, and I just got tired of looking for that 1%. Foose's biggest selling pet may not look frightening, but as a carnivore, it certainly can bite. It can also be dangerous to the environment, and that's why it's illegal to own one across the border in California. You can own a snake, a tiger, or even a bear, but you can't own a ferret. Many of Ken's customers are committing an offense when taking their new furry pets across the state line from Nevada. But Ken is very careful that he doesn't break the law when selling animals, including ferrets. He even plays a role in lobbying government to ensure that regulations surrounding the keeping of exotic and dangerous pets are relevant for both animals and owners. My, my biggest concern with keeping dangerous reptiles and amphibians, I'm talking about rattlesnakes, uh, large constrictors like like him or or something that is potentially life-threatening if someone comes in here and buys a rattlesnake from me I of course quiz them how are you doing this where do you live I ask them where you live because in the county they're not gonna let you have one in the city of Las Vegas you're required to have a permit and I wrote the regulations for the permit if you live down the street and you said you were qualified to keep a rattlesnake, I'll sell it to you. And if you die, or your wife dies, or your kids die, or your dog dies because of the snake, I don't care. I mean, you know, your choice, I don't care. If the three-year-old girl living three doors down in her backyard gets bit by the snake because it escaped from your house, that I care about. And the reason is, People die from hamster bites. People die from all kinds of animals. And when you accept the risk that comes with owning an exotic animal, you've accepted the risk. Animal ownership laws and regulations are constantly changing, and Ken's whole team are passionate about supporting animal owners' rights. They went from, we were able to keep any size snake, really, to, OK, well, now you can keep a snake that's typically under 12 feet but you need to have this permit and this, and the permit's the same as where you would own a sloth or a um, hide buddy or anything bigger that requires bigger space. I have to sit there and notify every one of my neighbors. I have to measure from my front door to the edge of my street, from the back door to the edge of the street, the back door to my fence line. It's just government overreach to wanting to know everything that you keep in your house and why you're keeping it. And it's something that we fight for. I mean, all of us that are passionate fight for and come together and try to make sure that those laws don't pass. Staff member Georgia has 48 reptiles, including several ball pythons, 
a reticulated python, a couple of boas, some iguanas, some red-footed tortoises, a water monitor, and that's not all. Um, nine ferrets, the genet, five dogs, three cats, and a bunch of rats. <laughs> like many exotic pet owners, George's life would be turned upside down by more restrictive animal laws. I think I would do my best to move because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to give up. That's like my thing, that's, you know, I love them all, so I wouldn't, I would leave. <laughs> as fun as ferrets may be, they'd be easy prey for many of the other animals in Ken Fuse's store. Though Nevada has strict ideas about which snakes locals are allowed to keep as pets. Only venomous snakes native to Nevada and rear fang snakes are allowed to be kept in the state. There are two types of venomous snake. Those that inject venom through fangs in the front of their mouths, like rattlesnakes or cobras. And those with fangs at the back of their mouths. They chew the venom into their prey. And then there are the snakes that can literally squeeze the life out of you. All right. Hey, Kim, what are you, what are you pulling out of here? This is a uh, tiger reticulated python. Uh, it's about 15 feet long. Air gas grabbed the other end of this, my back won't handle this. Uh, they do very well in captivity. Like I said, the only real downside to them is they get too big. Um, if a snake like this bites you, you're gonna know it, and you'll bleed. They're not deadly. They won't kill you, but they'll, they'll, they'll hurt you a little bit. And snakes aren't the only creatures in store with a venomous bite. Uh, this is a beaded lizard. They come from uh, Mexico and Central America. Uh, they are, they are venomous. Uh, they've got these um, venom glands in their lower jaw. And they don't have fangs, but they have very, very sharp, jagged teeth. They're actually really easy to keep, and they're generally pretty mellow. But it's also the excitement you've got a beaded lizard. They, um, you know, there's something romantic about having one. Beaded lizards can grow to three and a half feet long and are related to the Gila monster. They're the only two venomous lizards in the world and can deliver an extremely painful bite. And they just tend not to let go. Uh, they will hang on to you uh, forever. There is no anti-venom for this. They, they won't kill you. Years ago, we had um, someone break into one of the cages and stole one of our beaded lizards. Uh, and it was a baby, it was about four inches long. And he put it in his pocket. As he reached into the cage to grab it, he got bit. And then when he put it in his pocket, he got bit again. And ended up uh, going to the hospital. So he recovered, he made a full recovery, and in fact came into the store about a year later and stole something else from us. But we caught him that time. Yeah, but they're very, very cool, and, and people like them because they're a novelty. They're different, they're not lethal. Uh, it's not an animal that can kill you. It's almost like the throat, same thing, there's a lot of people that keep rattlesnakes and cobras and, and things like that. And I think it's just the novelty of it. People that just really like venomous reptiles. I can understand it, I don't own any myself, uh, but I used to. And there's kind of a thrill there, and they're very, very neat. And it's not just venomous reptiles that people consider exciting pets. Arachnids, better known as scorpions and spiders, are also a popular, if not unusual, companion. Nothing elicits as much fear in so many as the spider. Yet, Exotic Pets staff member Gaz has been fascinated with them from a young age. I was about eight years old and my, my first pet was uh, two leopard gecko lizards. And then after that, it was a tarantula, a rose hare. Yeah, that's, uh, they, they were my first kind of pets. And then like, my mum didn't like snakes. So I got a corn snake from a friend of mine and I had to keep it hidden. I had it hidden for a year before my mum found out. The largest of the spiders, tarantulas, may appear deadly but their venom won't kill you. That's not to say that their large fangs won't cause some damage or that their venom is completely harmless. You know, there's certain species of tarantulas that it's not recommended to handle. Um, like some of the old world species, like the Pocletheria. You know, um, 
you know, from like India, Sri Lanka, those areas. Um, they, they, they've got a pretty potent venom. It's gonna make you feel pretty rough for a few days if you get bitten by one of those. That's a Goliath 30, and now they are very big, very big fangs, and very aggressive, so it's really not recommended to hold those guys. Large fangs and potent venom aren't a tarantula's only means of inflicting pain on their human owners. As a defense mechanism against larger predators, many species of tarantulas flick tiny hairs off their abdomen. These hairs can irritate the eyes, nose, and even the lungs. So this is a new world species, so they've got these urticating hairs, which is their first line of defense is to flick these hairs. So they're, they're a little bit docile, you know, so they're not prone to bite. Their first line of defense is to flick hairs. So I wonder if it'll do it. See how he's, he's rubbing his back legs now, against his abdomen, that flicks up these hairs. So he's a bit of a hair flicker, but usually this species is not too bad. Oh yeah, they've got fangs and uh, you know, they've got venom, just like all spiders. There are more than 1,700 different types of scorpion though only about 20 of them have venom powerful enough to kill a person. The most dangerous scorpion, the Indian Red, could kill you within 24 hours. Uh, yeah, I mean, just a few weeks ago, I was stung by an emperor and a nation. I was, you know, I was just being foolish, you know. But yeah, they're actually a really easy going. Yeah. Don't threaten them, and they do pretty good. Yeah. I mean, the things with these, you want to be more worried about their pinch than the sting. Their pinch is really hard and they don't let go. They'll, they, they'll make you bleed. Yeah, they'll make you bleed, man. It's real hard. But their sting, like I said, got stung by them. Once again, it was like a wasp sting. You know, a little bit of irritation for about 30 minutes and that's it. As long as you don't, because uh, that's a big stinger. See yeah. the stinger in there? It's like a nail going into your hand. And it's not just teeth and fangs you have to watch out for. Many of the animals, Ken cells, can hurt you in more than one way. There's a risk to anything. I mean, it's like I said before, it doesn't matter whether it's a hamster. There's always an inherent risk. Uh, of course, we would tell people this is a rear fang state, be careful. But, uh, but beyond that, this is not another animal that could never hurt you. But the venom is, uh, is, is not strong enough to do more than like localized swelling. Um, the snakes, the, the, the animals that I have in here, quite frankly, that, that hurt you the most are things like these. Claws. It's it's the, the it's the teeth and the jaws and and the claws. These these are not from snake bites. These are from these people's these animals' toenails. Now these the key thing here. There we go. The key thing with these things is you control the legs. And that way you don't bleed. This is what I call tame. Um, when they first came in, there's no way I could hold them like that. I would be bleeding all over the place. Uh, I've never seen one try to bite, but they rip you to pieces with these very sharp claws. So many of the animals in Ken's store have bites that can rip skin or inject venom or claws that can draw blood. Why would anyone want to own them? They're just such cool animals, you know? It's just, they're, you know, they're, I've always found them fascinating. Um, from from the, the tiniest of little, like, common house spiders, you know? It's just beautiful, they're just fascinating animals, man. I've always been fascinated by them. It's the thrill. It's it's why do people race cars or, or hang glide? It's everybody has their own adrenaline fix and that they've chosen, and this is a lot of people, this is it. And for as long as there is a demand for exotic pets, Ken Foos and his team will continue to fight for the rights of animal owners to keep them. Not everyone should keep a lizard, not everyone should keep a dog or a cat or even a mouse. Uh, why would anyone have the big python or have, have this or have that? And I'm like, people jump out of perfectly good airplanes every day. Why are you going to ban skydiving? And there, there are a lot of these legislators say they're trying to protect us from ourselves. Well, if you're going to protect us from ourselves, uh, ban smoking, or ban drinking, or ban skydiving, or car racing, or football. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we do to hurt ourselves, and we do it on purpose. So it's it, it makes absolutely no sense to uh, you know, ban something that actually as benign as this. Mm -hmm.